Ability is what you are capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. Attitude determines how well you do it. A very pleasant morning to one and all. We welcome our Superior General of the Congregation of MSFS, Reverend Father Abraham, General Counselor in Charge of Education, Reverend Father Jacob, Provincial of Nagpur Province, Reverend Father Muthuswami, our Director, Reverend Dr. Domi Thomas, our Principal, Reverend Father Anthony, our Vice Principal, Reverend Father Rijo, our Office Administrator, Reverend Father Jomon, Father Councillors from all seven provinces of India, our esteemed panel of judges, teachers in charge of the participating schools, our coordinators and finalists. We welcome you to the first ever All India Father Peter Mermia Inter-Province Debate Competition 2020 organized by St. Francis de Sales School, Janapuri, New Delhi. It is indeed a matter of great pride and immense pleasure to see the Francilian fraternity gathered on one platform to debate and deliberate on one of the most pressing issues of the world, COVID times, pathways not perilous. A warm welcome to the competitors from seven provinces across our country, from the pristine heights of the north to the serene glory of the south. A microcosm of the unity and diversity our country is known for. When you pray, God listens. When you pray, storms get stilled, doors open, sickness gets healed, hope gets rekindled and strength is renewed. Before we begin with the day's proceedings, let us invoke God's presence with a prayer song.
With this auspicious beginning, I now call upon the school head girl Riya Sachdeva to formally welcome the gathering. Every day is an opportunity to be creative. The canvas is your mind. The brushes and colors are your thoughts and feelings. The panorama is your story, and the complete picture is a work of art called my life. On behalf of the management, staff, and students of Saint Francis de Sales School, New Delhi, we welcome you all to the first ever All India Father Peter Murmur Inter-Province Debate Competition, 2020. It is a matter of pride for us to welcome the Superior General of the Congregation of MSFS, Reverend Father Abraham, General Counselor in Charge of Education. Reverend Father Jacob, Provincial of Nagpur Province, Reverend Father Muthu Swami, our Director, Reverend Dr. Domi Thomas, our Principal, Reverend Father Anthony, our Vice Principal, Reverend Father Rijo, our Administrator, Reverend Father Joman, our Mistress, Sister Sarla, and all the Father Councillors from all the provinces across India. I also extend a warm welcome to our distinguished panel of judges, Dr. Namita Rajput, Mr. Subodh Chopra, and Dr. Shailaja Ramesh, who have spared their valuable time for this competition. A warm welcome to all the participants who are keen to put forward their debating skills and the teachers in charge from different provinces of our great nation. All the best to all the participants. We hope it becomes a memorable and enriching experience for one and all. Thank you. Thank you, Ria. Today's debate is in memory of Father Peter Mamia, the founder of the MSFS congregation. We present a short video on his life. Father Peter Mary Murmia was born on August 28, 1790 at Savoy, France. His parents, Francis Murmia and Antoinette Bastion, were wealthy farmers and were held in great respect. On Sundays, a priest in secrecy celebrated Holy Mass in their house. It was during this period that young Peter saw his mother pray so devoutly which made a deep impression on him. Mrs. Murmia was not an ordinary woman. On her own initiative, she opened a school and taught Peter, Louis and even the neighboring children reading, writing arithmetic and above all, catechism. Young Peter would top his class and already manifested the desire of becoming a priest and his mother encouraged him in this pursuit. In 1801, Ms. Murmia took Peter to the Presbyterial College of Ville de Bouvery, where he continued his studies. After his secondary school, Peter completed his seminary studies and was ordained a priest on 21st March 1813. Monsignor de Thioles, Bishop of Annecy, appointed him spiritual director at the major seminary in 1823. But in 1826, the bishop permitted him to dedicate himself entirely to the mission. Father Murmia was appointed the parish priest of Châtelain, a large and important parish when he was just 30 years old. Here, his main aim was an all-round reform, both among the clergy and the faithful. Father Murmia had now two activities in mind, that of a missionary and of a founder. And on 8th August 1837, Bishop Ray solemnly blessed the new house of the future missionaries of St. Francis de Sales. On the 24th of October 1838, Bishop Ray officially established the congregation of the missionaries of St. Francis de Sales. Father Murmia founded the congregation of the missionaries of St. Francis de Sales for parish mission, foreign mission and education of the youth. His missionary zeal impelled him to ask the Holy Father for a mission abroad and accept a vast mission territory in India. In May 1845, Cardinal Frenzoni, 
the prefect of the propaganda confided in the young congregation of NSC the mission territory of Vishakhapatnam in India father murmur kept a regular contact with these missionaries news of their difficulties and successes was periodically communicated to him through letters which took about 40 days to reach their destination his achievements are unparalleled while he was given charge of a small area of france he spread out his arms of compassion to the farthest shores in india his accomplishments are of the highest caliber as he emerged out to be a true and devoted follower of the gentleman saint saint francis de sales his missionaries of saint francis de sales have not only succeeded in bringing education to india but also succeeded in embedding themselves and embodying the local culture thus enriching both eastern and western cultures a symbol of humility working for humanity this is the story of father peter mary murmy the journey of a visionary I now request the Superior General of the Congregation of MSFS Reverend Father Abraham to share his thoughts with us. Good morning to all of you. Namaste. I wish you all a very happy Mermier's Day. I'm glad to know that St Francis de Sales Senior Secondary School Janakpuri New Delhi is hosting the all india inter province sfs schools debate competition 2020 on the occasion of the 158th death anniversary of the venerable founder of the missionaries of st francis de sales servant of god father peter mary murphy i congratulate sfs school new delhi for holding this highly esteemed national competition with due preparations while weathering the storm of covid-19 father mermier insisted that all education is a work of love that implies respect for children and the youth the spirit of father mermier continues to live through sfs schools all over the world i understand that this national debate competition 2020 is a collaborative effort of the sfs schools in india to have a creative space for our students to express their thoughts and views to hone their public speaking skills to learn to be responsible and sensitive to others opinions to build a sense of confidence and courage and to make sure that their voices are heard and validated by the audience it is said it is better to debate a question without settling than to settle a question without debating debates will help students to have a multifaceted analysis and knowledge of the subject before they make conclusions it's a great learning experience for speakers and audience and an opportunity for students to have interaction and exposure to the public at a time when many many students tend to be engrossed in technology and gadgets i wish the speakers of the debate an exciting time and the enthusiastic audience a pleasant time to listen to the eloquent speakers i thank father anthony amaldas the principal and the staff at sfs school jagatpuri for organizing this tribute to father peter murmier on his death anniversary god bless sfs schools Thank you father I request the general counselor in charge of education reverend father jacob to share a few words with us 
I am happy to learn that St. Francis de Sales School, Janakpuri is organizing an inter-province debate competition on the Founders' Day. Our founder, Father Peter Mary Marbeer said, the heart of education is the education of the heart, which means, first of all, that education should help us to take moral decisions, which means decisions that are based on honesty and sincerity. Secondly, education should make us more human. We should have human qualities. We should be sympathetic and compassionate towards fellow human beings. That we should lift up human spirit with the human qualities. Fourthly, education is meant to search for perfection and excellence. We should study anything with great interest. We should put our heart where our interest is. We should pursue learning with interest and focus. Therefore, the Marmiarian phrase, the heart of education is the education of the heart, is educative as well as transformative. Thank you, Father. I now request our principal, Reverend Father Anthony, to enlighten us on the significance of this day. Reverend Father Abraham Metivillian, the Superior General of the MSFS Congregation, respected Father Jacob Karamakulil, the General Counselor in Charge of Education, respected Father John Brito Mutusami, the Provincial Superior of the Nagpur province, respected the fathers provincials of different six provinces, respected councillors in charge of different six provinces, and my dear fathers and sisters, dear Father Richo, the vice principal, dear Father Chomo, the office administrator, respected judges, Miss Sabita, the teacher in charge of the debate competition and all my dear teachers and my dearest young, vibrant and enthusiastic students wish you all a very good, happy and pleasant morning. Every year, 30th September, we commemorate the death anniversary of Father Peter Mary Maumier. Father Peter Mary Maumier was known for his faith trust and confidence in God. He was born in France at the time of French Revolution when the schools were shut, when there was a deep terrible spiritual crisis. He became a morning star at the time of darkness. At the end of his life, working so hard for bringing the people into proper faith in God, he became completely blind. He got fractured his legs, never lost his trust in God, but he always followed God and his will. At good times, my dear friends, <clears throat> like the sunflower keeping the direction towards the son, he kept always his faith and trust towards God. At times of darkness, as the sunflower at the end of the day would be waiting in the east, looking for the sun to once again rise, he too waited for the will of God in his life. Let us not lose our sight of God at this time of pandemic COVID-19. Let's have childlike confidence and trust in God to move ahead in our lives. I sincerely thank all the fathers from seven provinces along with the counselors in charge of education for your 
cooperation. I thank all the teachers in charge of this debate competition from SF School Delhi. All the teachers from different schools belonging to different provinces for helping and motivating the students. And my dear lovely students, young participants, we are really thrilled by your participation. All the best. Have a great day. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We have gathered here today to witness a battle of wits. To judge the debate competition, we are honored to have with us a panel of esteemed judges who would use their prowess and discerning power to judge the most deserving speakers from across our great nation. Our first judge for the day is Dr. Namita Rajput. Dr. Namita Rajput has served as a principal OSD at Sri Aurobindo College Evening University of Delhi and has an enriching experience as Associate Professor, Department of Commerce, Sri Aurobindo College. She completed her Master's in Commerce from Hindu College, University of Delhi, MPhil and PhD from Delhi School of Economics, and a postdoctoral research fellowship program in finance from University of Delhi apart from master's degree in information technology. With a rich teaching experience of almost 27 years, she has contributed tremendously in the area of research, presented papers in over 150 national and international seminars. She has published over 33 books, composed 34 modules for UGC project e Shala and contributed to the University Grants Commission, University of Delhi, Ministry of Corporate Affairs and several government projects in various capacities. She has also been working tirelessly for the upliftment of underprivileged people, children and women for the last 15 years through her NGO. She has been a recipient of several awards and honours, including the Government of India. Ma'am, we are honoured with your presence and your wide range of professional experience at our disposal today. We welcome you, ma'am. Our second judge for the day is Mr. Subodh Chopra. An alumnus of SFS Delhi, Sir is a professional screenplay writer and film director. He wrote for the critically acclaimed television show called Reporter on Doordarshan, then rose to fame with nine stories for Z Entertainment Channel series called Rishte and an award-winning docudrama series Hakikat, hosted by Mahesh Bhatt. He went on to write hits like Murder, Tum Sa Nahi Dekha and Dialogues for Rogue, starring Irfan Khan. He directed a 10-minute war film for the Indian Army and wrote the voiceover for Amitabh Bachchan. The film was premiered at the Vijay Diva ceremony in a jam-packed stadium in Delhi, with Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi presiding over it, along with other dignitaries in attendance. He has been actively writing and directing TV commercials and corporate videos. Presently, he is working on a web series for Z5. Sir, we are blessed to have your wisdom and discernment at hand today. We welcome you, sir. Our next judge is Dr. Shailaja Ramesh. Dr. Shailaja is the manager, content development at STEP from the Hindu group of newspapers. An avid reader, her passion for English led her on a path which took her all the way after graduating with a master's degree at the Ethiraj College for Women to the National University of Singapore where she pursued a doctoral degree in English literature. Her stint in Singapore also opened up the world of education and pedagogy for her. Having worked at Cambridge Assessment English, she brings a rich insight into the needs of English learners in India. At STEP, she wishes to link her passion for the English language 
to her desire to make a positive impact on Indian learners, contributing to a better India for tomorrow. We are proud to have your expertise and dynamism amidst us. We welcome you, ma'am. Before we begin the debate, let me acquaint you with the rules and regulations for the All India Father Peter Mamia Inter-Province Debate 2020. The debate is open to students of classes 9 to 12 from schools across the MSFS provinces. Each participating province is represented by two speakers, one for the motion, one against the motion, and one interjector. The topic of debate for today's competition is COVID times pathways not perilous. This year, due to the pandemic, we have decided to conduct the debate online while maintaining the highest tradition of debating. So, the judges will view the speeches of our enthusiastic finalists from the provinces all over India, namely Dibrugar, Guwahati, Nagpur, Pune, Southeast, Southwest, and Vishakapatnam provinces. These finalists have been selected from among 20 schools. Each debater will put forward his or her views for two and a half to three minutes. Only one interjection per speaker will be allowed. The speaker will have to answer the question put up by the interjector. The criteria for assessing speakers is as follows. Content and logical arrangement of arguments, 10 points. Debating skills and confidence, 10 points. Language, expression and diction, 10 points. Argumentation and convincing power based on rebuttal, 10 points. Making a total of 40 points for each speaker. Each interjector will be allowed two questions. The criteria for assessing interjectors is as follows. Language and expression, 10 points. Relevance, 10 points. Making a total of 20 points for each question and 40 points for each interjector. The interjectors are requested to keep their questions short. No cross-questioning is allowed. And now for the prizes. The prizes for the All India Father Peter Mermia Inter-Province Debate are as follows. Certificate and a cash prize of Rs 3000 to the best speaker for the motion and against the motion. Certificate and a cash prize of Rs 2000 to the runner-up for the motion and against the motion. The interjector securing the first prize will receive a certificate and a cash prize of Rs 1500. The winner of the second prize receives a certificate and a cash prize of Rs 1000. The host school will participate but not compete for any of the prizes. The decision of the judges will be final and binding. And now, let the tussle of opinions begin. All the best to all participants. The participants are requested to check the order of debaters and interjectors as displayed on the screen. I request speaker number one, Subhashini Pegu, to speak for the motion. I Subhashni Pegu of class 10 would like to speak for the motion Corona Times Pathways Not Perilous. For some, it begins with cough, fever and difficulty in breathing, while for others it begins with a dull sense of taste and smell and for yet others it's marked by nothing at all. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 originated in Wuhan, China and has now spread all over the world. Although COVID-19 has turned our world around and disrupted our daily routine, but I like to state with confidence that this pandemic has turned out to be a pathway of growth and opportunities for us in many ways and not perilous. 
This pandemic has left us as a disciplined and united society pushing us forward to change our attitudes towards both blue and white collar workers. At one instance, the whole nation clapped their hands together in honor of the diligent pandemic workers. A case study of 188601 suicides have shown that 9% of the students commit suicide because of Monday blues. However, after the onset of lockdown, students no longer suffer from Monday blues as apps like Google Classroom, Google Meet, Zoom, WhatsApp, etc. has acted as their saviors and means to stay connected with their peers. Education was also taken to a next level by digitalizing the way of teaching. Here on, even the weakest student can reshape himself and the poorest country can reshape itself. One of the consequences of COVID-19 is the transformation of the way we work. In India, work from home offers a unique opportunities for women, especially mothers who would previously be solely dependent on their husband's income to earn from their own labor. Although the movement of vehicles, trains and flights have been cancelled or restricted due to COVID-19, the air pollution has been decreased and the nature has regained a lot of its long lost glory. Even the Himalayan mountain range could be seen after 30 years and Taj Mahal looks much vibrant now. After the stoppage of industrial wastage and pollutants in the rivers, the river pollution has been decreased to such a level that even the water of river Ganga could be drunk. Scientists predict that COVID-19 may never go away. Therefore, adapting to this new normal is the way out of it. So let's embrace the situation, face the challenges, grab the opportunities and move ahead confidently. Thank you. That was wonderful. I request interjector number one, Gante Shri Vaishnavi, to ask the question to speaker number one. Good morning, honorable judges, teachers, and everyone present here. This is Sri Vaishnavi, and I'm Code One. I would like to ask a question to my opponent. In one of your points, you mentioned that environmental pollution is getting decreased, right? But in this present lockdown period, everyone is using ACs, and ACs or the air conditioners emit harmful greenhouse gases. It is indirectly raising the pollution level. Then how can you say that the pollution level is decreased? Thank you. We are going to compare how ACs are in carbon particles. We are going to compare how this stoppage of the heels and, uh, and the lines spreading carbon particles. Then, of course, I can say that the pollution, the carbon emissions in the air has reduced to a significant level. Thank you. Thank you. Opposing the motion is Speaker number one, G. Bosco. Mr. Speaker, sir, and my fellow distinguished debaters, I, G. Bosco of Class 12, would like to speak against the motion COVID time is perilous no pathways. Would any one of you today dare to walk in crowded streets or marketplaces without a mask and hand sanitizers? Where are the governments across the globe issuing SOPs for walking, driving, meeting people, visiting hospitals or healthcare centers? We are in difficult time and our lives are put in peril due to COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Speaker, sir, and my fellow opponents who spoke for the motion, I would like to say that COVID times perilous no pathways in any sense. Allow me to put forward a few points for your consideration. Now, there is global economic recession by 5.2%. Over 36 million people have lost their jobs. 1.6 million people are in the process of losing jobs. Vast majority educational institutions have been closed. Though online education has become the new normal, more than 43% of students have no access to online education as well. This pandemic has brought untold miseries in our society. The impact of this pandemic on our educational institutions are great. Students like me are facing difficulties in our studies. Markets and other business establishments are closed. All the ongoing developmental projects are closed. This pandemic has brought many changes in our life. Our lives are becoming lazier by staying at home for long duration without much work. Students are now facing difficulties in their studies since schools and colleges have been closed. Most of their works are done online. Over-dependence on electronic gadgets have negative impact in our body. The habits of the people have changed in this lockdown. Online classes has become an excuse for students for misusing phones and laptops. 
If the lockdown for COVID-19 outbreak continues, then we will have a bad impact in our society. For example, use of mobile phones and laptops by students has led to many students becoming addicted to online games and pornography. Use of electronic gadgets has impacted the eyesight of many students. We have entered into day 179 of COVID-19 lockdown. Look at our economy. For the first time in history, our GDP has shrunk to minus 23.9%. This is the impact of COVID-19 besides the loss of thousands of lives. Our classes are held online. Work from home has become the new normal. Social distancing is a must. We are now experiencing a new form of virtual reality, learning, unlearning, and relearning from the digital space. This virtual debate itself is a proof of that. Some of us who are fortunate and tech savvy only are included in this reality, whereas thousands of less privileged ones are excluded in this digital space. There is a greater digital divide between the rich and the poor, the ruler and the urban. Let me therefore conclude by positing that COVID times perilous not pathways, and I wish all of you to stay safe, stay indoors, follow government SOPs, and help those who are in need during this perilous time. Thank you. Thank you. That was eloquent and well expressed. I request interjector number one, Ganti Sri Vaishnavi, to ask a question to speaker number one. In one of your points, you mentioned that the economy of the world has decreased. So I would like to say that all the economies of the world are crashed equally. So our country, India, has a very great chance to emerge as a superpower and at an individual level, uh, and at an individual level, the ratio of income to the expenditure is same. So can you please justify your point that how that economy has affected us? Well, uh, good morning, sir, and my fellow distinguished debaters. Well, our GDP has, this coronavirus has affected our GDP, yes. I would like to raise a question. Because of this lockdown, Many people could not work. There's increase in loss of jobs, and many people are in the process of losing jobs. So our Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that our country will be, in a course of time, our country, we have to be self-reliant and self-sufficient. So do you think that this agriculture alone will increase our GDP? never in a lifetime. Only agriculture will not increase our GDP. Well, of course, I agree that agriculture is the backbone of our economy, but if only our agriculture alone will not increase our GDP. So allow me to put forward a few points for your consideration. There is global economic recession by 5.2%. Vast economic education institutions are closed. Many people are losing their jobs. Many people are struggling to survive themselves. And some people are dying of hunger. So amidst all this, there are lots of jobs. And can you say that our GDP will increase? And people are afraid to interact with other countries. And this will lead to deglobalization. Because of this, our GDP will surely come down. Yes, our GDP, our GDP has already come down by minus 23.0%. Besides the loss of thousands of lives. Is the life of human being more important than our economy? Please, think over it and reconsider your proposition. Let me conclude by reiterating that our GDP is not so important than our human life. Our human lives are more important than our GDP. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. I request Subhashini to answer again as her audio was not clear. Judges, please note, speaker one will answer again. Good morning, judges. Am I audible? So Sid said that uh, the AC emits carbon particles and we can't say that our is truly getting clean. But I like to, am I clear now? So my point is that if we are going to compare how much carbon uh, getting spread due to 
ACs and how much carbon particles are getting omitted because of less use of vehicle. Of course, port is uh, more larger than her point because the vehicles, flight, and etc. have reduced, and because of that, the carbon emissions in the atmosphere has reduced significantly. I request the speaker number two, Tanzil Vazir, to speak for the motion. Every day, my father goes to office at 9 a.m. and returns by 8 p.m. The only time I could talk to him was at the dining table. But looking at his exhausted face and weary eyes, I kept quiet. But today, I thank God for being alive during this pandemic. Now, I can share my feelings with him whenever I want. Good morning. Today, I, Tanzil Wazeri of class 10, would like to speak for the motion on the topic COVID times pathways not perilous. Firstly, ecological pathways. During the coronavirus lockdown, carbon emission, which causes deaths of more than 4 million people worldwide, has now reduced. Today, we have clear skies and visible stars. Secondly, better hygienic and independent pathways. From childhood, good hygienic practices were emphasized from home to school as an important skill for human survival. But we just ignored it. But now, we cover our mouths when we cough, sanitize and wash hands more often. Personally, COVID has taught me to cook food, wash clothes, more proficient in computer and technology, making me independent. Thirdly, Agriculture and online-based economy is the new pathway. Agriculture was always the backbone of our economy. Pandemic has made us realize it more intensely that even the educated and white-collar job seekers have taken it very seriously. It's in the long run, this pandemic will boost the Indian economy. As the unlock happens, MNCs are moving out of China, creating a new vista of economic revolution. Online classes have become the new norm for educational institutions, saving huge on infrastructural costs. Fourthly, value-based lifestyle is the ultimate pathway. Honorable Speaker Sir, when there was lockdown, all the shops were closed except the grocery shops. COVID-19 has impelled us to change personal lifestyle, prioritizing human needs and minimizing luxury. The virus has forced us to revisit family relationships and realize the importance of police and health workers. Finally, the virus has taught us the benefits of silence and solitude. To look into ourselves and explore the deeper recesses of our consciousness, leaving aside all the superficial activities. Honorable Speaker Sir, in the face of adversity, we have a choice. We can be bitter or we can be better. If we take this pandemic positively, then surely we will get positive results, not of COVID, but of the whole human race. And that would be a grand success for all of us. If the opposition is still not convinced, then may God give them blessings and protection from COVID. Honorable Speaker, sir, I rest my case, but not my cause. Thank you. Thank you. That was well said. I request interjector number two, Ritant Chopra, to ask a question to speaker number two. Hello, everyone. I'm Ritant Chopra. As my friend Tanzil told, that online education has saved infrastructure and it is better. But I have to question him. What do you say about the lack of interaction between the student and the teacher and between classmates? Isn't it important? Isn't it important in a student's life to interact between his peers? Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your question. But my perspective regarding your question is completely different, and I'm convinced about it. When a child goes to the school for the first time, he cries. But hopefully, when we were in our home, we didn't cry. When a child goes to the school for the first time, he misses his parents, but hopefully, when we were in our home, we didn't miss our parents. We were with our parents. When a kid goes to the school for the first time, he sees everyone as a stranger. 
be it his classmates or be it the teachers. Everyone is a stranger to him. But hopefully, when we were in our home, no one was a stranger for us. Everyone was with us. Yes, it's true that that type of interaction we, didn't, we don't get now. But at least we're able to talk with our teacher. We're able to interact with our teacher, not in the real platform, but even virtually we are able to do it thanks to the technology. And moreover, many people are talking that online classes have become that online classes are creating a lot of problems. Like many people do not have all smartphones and all. But I have a question. If the government of Assam can provide 22,000 scooters to the, uh, to the girls who secured first division marks in the high secondary examination, then why can't it provide just a small smartphone? It was estimated that it's providing 22,000 scooters to the girls who secured first division in the high secondary examination costs 450 crores. But instead of spending this 450 crores in buying scooter, if the government would have spent this 450 crores in buying one small smartphone, then honorable judges, more than 9.5 lakh mobile phones can be given to all students of Assam. If the government, honorable speakers, honorable judges, I again I repeat, more than 9.5 lakh mobile phones can be distributed to all the students of Assam. It's definitely possible. If the government is active, or rather I should say proactive in this situation, then definitely it is possible and there's no doubt about it. Thank you. Thank you. Opposing the motion is speaker number two, Rohan Prasad Sharma. If death is a pathway, I don't have any arguments to offer. If poverty and unemployment are pathways, if the loss of someone's mother, someone's father, someone's brother is a pathway, I don't have any arguments to offer. Honorable Speaker Sir, I was shocked when I saw the topic. I feel sorry for the people who support this motion. I have great sympathy for their mindset. Good morning everyone. It's me Rohan making my firm stand to strongly oppose the motion of the house that is COVID times, pathways not perilous. Almost 1 million people have died around the world. According to Down to Earth organization, 400 million people have lost their jobs. Thousands have committed suicide and millions have become homeless and are living in utter poverty. Poverty may just be a word for us, but it's a question of life and death for the people who are unable to satisfy their hunger. If this looks like a pathway to the treasury benches, it's a high time that we change the meaning of pathway in the dictionary. Honorable Speaker, so if we talk about India, the scenario is more pathetic. As of today morning, 48 lakh cases and 80,000 people have died. According to Times of India, 25% people in India are illiterate and one third people live below poverty line. The group that suffers the most in this situation is the students. There are over 350 million students in our country. The largest student population in the world. But honorable speaker sir, according to a survey conducted by NCRT, 27% of these students don't have access to electricity. 28% of these students don't have access to mobile phones. The so-called online education is received by only 18% students. The learning output of the rest 82% students is a big zero. Now let's talk about the environment. Many people believe that the lockdown has replenished the nature. It has brought down the pollution rates. But I think that the replenishment of nature by the lockdown is like an interval in a movie. It's just a break. It's not the end of the movie. The break ends, the movie starts. The lockdown ends, pollution restarts. Now let us look into the political side. Price hike, unemployment, poverty are skyrocketing and the GDP is going down to minus. But we people cannot do anything. We cannot show our agitation. We cannot demonstrate against the government. This is a threat to democracy. It's a pathway for the autocrats, not the democrats. Now, Honorable Speaker, sir, we also witnessed mass migration of laborers in our country. As the factory shut down, these laborers had nothing to do. They lost their income source and they had to go back to their homes. At last, let's pray that the scientists find a vaccine against this virus and no one loses their lives. Even after these arguments, if the treasury benches think that it's a pathway, sorry, I don't need a pathway. I need a closed door where we can live as we lived before. So with this, I would like to rest my case, but not my cause. Thank you. Thank you. That was well argued. I request interjector number two, Ritant Chopra, to ask a question to speaker number two. 
my friend Rohan said that people are losing their jobs and the economy is crashing down. Don't you know how much the e-commerce has grown? Don't you know how much the health industry who makes sanitizers and masks has grown? Hasn't it created new areas of opportunity and jobs? Thank you. Thank you so much for your question, sir. But I have a very different perspective to this question, and I'm pretty convinced about it. So starting with the e-commerce and virtual businesses, as you mentioned, these things are nothing new. They've already pre-existed. These things, the pandemic has not resulted in a new innovation for the humans. These things were already there. Just during the pandemic, a little bit of number of users has increased. But that does not mean that it has given rise to new kinds of employment. It's just the same. These things were already there. And most importantly, when you talk about virtual businesses, when you talk about all these other things, there's no emotional connect. When a person goes to his office, he explores his maximum potential. In a virtual platform, he may do his best. But what he does in a real life is completely different from what he does at, in a virtual platform because it does not give you a real feel. It does not allow you to explore your max potential. And also, the e-commerce, whatever is going on, these are most of these things that have come up during the pandemic are just temporary. After the lockdown, those people who are using these things, do you think they are going to reuse it or they are going to live their normal lives, go to their office? They're not going to do the things that they are doing in the pandemic. Most importantly, these things are just temporary. So that's what my answer says. Thank you so much. Thank you. We now have speaker number three, Joshua Jose Maliakal, who is going to speak for the motion and express his views. Thanks to one and all present here. My name is Master Joshua Maliakal, and I'll be speaking in motion of COVID-19 pathways not perilous. On the eve of 2020, a new strain of coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2 was reported from Wuhan, China. By the end of February, the number of confirmed cases of the infection called COVID-19 surpassed 80,000. The infection spread to over 30 other countries and its outbreak was declared as a global health emergency. As a result, the lockdown was imposed. What could not be achieved in the last 34 years since the inception of the Ganga Action Plan GAP from 1986, with hundreds of lakhs being pumped in, is visible in just 34 days since the lockdown, says Professor B. D. Tripathi, chairman of the GAP. Business is another sector which was harshly affected due to COVID-19. But during the lockdown, Ambani managed to raise more than $20 billion by selling a third of Jio to a group of investors. Ratan Tata said that the year 2020 is to survive and not to make profit. Billionaires from Bill Gates to Jack Ma are donating millions to alleviate the COVID-19 pandemic. Multinational companies are providing more job opportunities for people to work from home as they are saving an ample of resources. To mitigate the hardships faced by borrowers during the pandemic, the Central Bank of India allowed the lenders to grant a loan moratorium for six months. Referring to the current situation, no one would have ever imagined that online learning could have played an important role and imparting knowledge to students when it's not sure when their schools would reopen. During this crucial period, NGOs played a major role in helping our migrants. The role played by the NGOs deserve all appreciation for coming forward and helping the migrants by providing food, water and transport. Amidst the pandemic, we have learned that family is not an important thing, but it is everything and the love of family and the appreciation of friends is much more important than wealth and privileges. And last but not the least, COVID has taught us that even though the doors of God are shut, the greatest religion is humanity. Thank you and have a great day. That was well spoken. I request interjector number three, Mervin Anto Santosh to ask a question 
Mr. Speaker, number three. Dear judges, I am Nirmin Anta Shantosh. Would like to ask three questions as an interjector. The speaker who spoke for the motion said that the online has not stopped the learning of education, but I strongly disagree that because you justify that education is only for the purpose of learning subject matters. How can every aim of education be attained through online classes? Thank you. Can you please repeat your question? Do you justify that education is only for the purpose of learning subject matters? How can every aim of education be attained through online classes? What makes us humans different than any other species on this earth? We have the capability to adapt and evolve much faster than any other being on the planet. That's the difference between us and a stray dog or a cat. We have the capacity to adapt and evolve. That's what makes us the superior species of this planet. Challenges come and we must welcome, welcome them and think from a different perspective to overcome them instead of weeping. There were two Greek brothers. According to Greek myths, there were two brothers, Prometheus and Epithemius. Prometheus always thought about the future. He thought, what could I do in the present in order to make a bright future? Whereas the other brother, Epithemius, was always regretting about the past. Prometheus ending up, ended up bringing fire to mankind when mankind was shivering in the ice. Whereas Epithemius, he couldn't do anything and he was still regretting about the past. Even the greatest of all times, the great Greek philosopher Socrates said, that the secret of challenge is, is to focus not on what we have lost, but on what we can gain. Thank you. Thank you. Opposing the motion is speaker number three, Astha Tamgare. A very good morning to everyone. I, Ms. Astha Tamgare from class 9th would like to speak against the motion. COVID-19, the word itself gives us a scare. Sad, depressed, dejected, downcast, broken hearted, gloomy. This is what the world is at present. This pandemic situation is defining a global health crisis of our time and one of the greatest challenges we have faced. But I believe this pandemic is more than a health crisis. It's also an unprecedented socio-economic and political crisis that is definitely going to leave us scars. Never in my life I thought that the doors of God would be shut. Is it a punishment? Is the world filled with wicked people? It's not just COVID-19, my dear friends. From the beginning of the year, there have been natural calamities like wildfires, locust attacks, earthquakes that led an emergent situation all over the world. Every day, people are losing their jobs and incomes of no way knowing when normality will return. People are scared. You read the papers, you'll find how people are committing suicides. Not only suicides, but mass suicidals where even a toddler is just strangulated or poisoned. Oh, how I still remember when the lockdown was announced and the people were struck, especially the migrants. I remember seeing a news where a pregnant migrant lady who had covered up 100 kilometers delivered her baby midway on the highway and then again proceeded for a journey. So heart-wrenching. How did this happen? Why did this happen? Many say that it is written in the Bible that when God is furious, he sends down pandemics, locusts, floods to destroy the earth till the people do repent. Many called the doomsday. Many say that the world is coming to an end. Some say that the pandemic is man-made and we invited it because of our wrong eating habits and the cruelty done to animals. And above all, the crudest thing is that of those who lost their loved ones due to COVID-19. The people are not even allowed to pay their last tribute or be the part of the rituals. The International Labour Organization esteems that near about 195 million people's job could be lost. And so I wish the situation never come again. Hope we all learn some good lessons from this one. And all I can say is, 
thank god if you're still healthy and safe and work to make this world a better place thank you that was wonderfully expressed i request interjector number 3 marvin anto santosh to ask a question to speaker number 3 i will say that because of the daily wages who are walking uh, who are traveling because of them the covid and is spread through through india because if they are in, a, in their place then uh, how can the spread is spread, spread through the india can you please repeat your question i not got you because of the daily wages who travel from one place to another place during the lockdown they spread the corona virus because from one place to another place the corona virus spreading easily to when we are walk, when we are traveling from one place to another place they spread the corona virus okay so as you said that traveling from one place to another leads to more spread of corona virus but you know people are intending to walk because the vendors the hawkers they are not getting their daily wages so they need to work on the streets how they all can be so invisible and as we all know covid 19 hit the poor hardest all around us in our great metropolises we see cranes on the top of buildings steadily climbing the skywards but we do not see the workers inside the vendors the hawkers they return empty handed to their homes we do see them either yet there are millions of them thank you thank you we now have speaker number 4 riya sajdeva to express her views for the motion with 73,48,923 plus cases of the novel corona virus 74,000 plus deaths tremors of the world war 3 and failing interpersonal relations could there ever be a bright side to the most haunting year of the century 2020 Greetings to everyone present here. My name is Riya Sajdeva, and I stand here to strongly support the motion COVID times pathways not perilous. Without the dark, there is no light, and without the wrongs, you'd never know what's right. Recent events worldwide are terrifying and sad, but as for me, 2020 has been an era of new beginnings. I made my first painting. wrote my first story tried my hand at guitar and discovered an absolutely new genre of songs what if 2020 is not just another year but one of life's biggest challenges to knock down harder than ever what if 2020 is the time to heal and let heal not just for me and you but for the environment as well which can be seen by falling carbon emissions by 17% increase in the use of pdfs by 50% and an increase in the air quality index by 49% now my worthy opponents may say that the lockdown has seen an increase in the number of divorce cases but my dear friends it has only exposed you to the reality and stability of your own relationships indians banging thalis and italians reciting hymns aren't mere signs of lunacy but collectiveness because we are in this together so while optimists and pessimists fight over their half filled half empty glass theory be a realist get the glass and gulp the opportunity down before they even analyze it i leave you with a few open ended questions to ask yourself are you the phoenix that rises from the ashes or a mere piece of coal that burns to volatile vapors Are you the sun that shines regardless of external situations or the moon that dislodges between surrounding adversities So the next time someone asks you to describe the pandemic I wish bluer skies cleaner hands and self feeling comes to you instead of mass deaths pain and suffering I rest my case by saying that this is not the end if we defeated the SARS pandemic and the oil crisis of 1973 This too shall pass. Either the lockdown becomes a positive catalyst to our future, or just an excuse to its failure. You decide. Thank you. Those were some good arguments. 
I request interjector number four, Atharv Ghanshyam Joshi, to interject speaker number four. Good morning, everyone present here. I am Master Atharv Joshi. Would like to question speaker number four based upon her points. So, as she clearly mentioned that nature is getting a good impact during the lockdown, like the air is getting fresher, rivers are getting clean. But how much do you think are we humans benefiting from it? Like just by sitting out in our homes, we can't breathe fresh air, we can't drink clean water. So what about that? Thank you, Mr. Interjector, for your question. But I fear our opinions are not very synonymous regarding the same. You said, how are humans benefiting? I question you, how are humans not benefiting? We have the opportunity to do everything we want. Today, you can decide to be an artist. You can decide to be a musician. You have, you have 24 hours in hand. You do not have to go anywhere to be something. You have all of it in your own hands in the split of your mobile screen. You can do whatever you want. It's all limited in this screen. So you can no longer say that I do not have the opportunities because we have the same opportunities as compared to anyone in any regions or in any region of the world. And when it comes to, you know, the air quality index and the improving environment, I think this is a very significant change, which has not been seen in like over 100 years. As I mentioned a few statistics, uh, that has been a very significant change. Thank you. Thank you. It's the turn of speaker number four, Alana Sebi against the motion. 15th November 2019. This was the day when a man of 55 years in Hubei province of China came into the clasp of this malignant virus. But back then, not even the wisest man could predict the impact this virus was going to have on the strongest of nations. A very pleasant morning to one and all present here. Today I, Arana Sebi, am standing here to speak against the motion. Covid times, pathway is not perilous. Who knew there could be times where people could just cuff away to death in isolation? Who knew there could be times where we would run out of cremation grounds and coffins to bury people? And yet, 27 million people and counting is still under the clench of this dreaded virus, with the death cases inching closer to a million. My worthy opponents may say that COVID-19 has really helped in improving air quality. But my dear friends, what good is this good air? when there will be no one left to breathe it. A report released in July 2020 states that 5 million Indian salaried men have already lost their jobs. And the reports in September are yet to arrive. People after struggling day and night for their cities had gone to different countries to live decent lives. And now all they are struggling for is to come back to their motherlands with 55% of them losing jobs. Forget about the foreign migrants. Our very own Indian migrants had to walk back to their homes thousands of kilometers away due to lack of transport. India is one country known for its poverty, with more than 80% of the population who can't even afford three square meals. Forget about a smartphone. With the classes shifting online, 67% of the students currently have no access to education at all. Online classes may be a boon for some. But there was a reason in the first place why we had classroom studies. With the classes shifting online, more and more students have been experiencing headaches, eye irritation and what not. For some people, lockdown days have been a very effective way of contemplating on their lives, learning new skills, etc. But is it really so? Every day we hear cases of domestic violence, suicides, deaths, murder, theft and what not. And after lockdown, we're hearing it even more. After all, they've increased 32% post-COVID. COVID-19 has had such an impact on the lives of people that the meme of the year itself is the funeral dance. Then how? How can you say that COVID times is not perilous? With this, I rest my case. Thank you. Thank you. That was thoughtful indeed. I request interjector number four, Atharv Ghanshyam Joshi to interject speaker number four. Yes, so as my opponent said that uh, e-learning is going on and they're putting stress and most of the children are not getting facility of e-learning. But I totally opposed it. 
and saying that government is providing many broadcasting channels and radios 12 12 hours programs have been broadcasted to children to get education and even if they are not getting smartphones government is fixing some facility to get radios and televisions to get broadcasting news so that they can get education what about those can you repeat yeah sure so my question is even though you said that many of the children are not getting online education our government is trying its level best to provide radio and television to broadcasting channels so that they may get like many channels are open for broadcasting many educational things have been taught like teachers are not there but live on online platform they are performing and rural children are getting facility of that so how do you think upon this uh thank you mr interjector for your question but i would like to say that uh, the problem lies with the online class itself people have been provided but the facts still say that 67% of the students currently still have no education to education at all and besides the education and the current system which is the e learning is directly impacting on their health which is they are experiencing stresses there are people committing suicide that they are not there is in kerala itself there was a girl who committed suicide stating that she had no access to education and people are experiencing headaches i myself sitting for for hours in front of the laptop or in front of my phone i'm experiencing eye irritation so what education is education when it is directly impacting on the life it is directly impacting on the health of the students thank you thank you we will now take a short break of 10 minutes kindly note you are requested not to leave the meeting you can switch off your camera and microphone thank you
Welcome back. Hope you're rejuvenated. We resume the debate. Supporting the motion is speaker number five, Monali Shankar Patne. Nature is healing. Skies are bluer. Fewer cars are crashing. Isn't it amazing? I, Monali Patne of Class Nine, would like to speak for the motion. COVID times, pathway is not perilous. As we are aware that we are going through a pandemic of the magnitude the world has not seen since 1918. COVID-19 has not only affected our country but also the entire world. The most disheartening part of this pandemic is that it has affected the developed countries, the developing countries as well as the underdeveloped. Most of the countries, including India, have either gone through lockdown or are under lockdown as I speak today. People are facing a host of problems, but as they say, every cloud has a silver lining. Although very challenging, the pandemic has also shown us pathways that will stand us in good stead going forward. During this painful period of lockdown, people have begun to keep a check on their health by shifting from fast food culture to healthy homemade Indian food. The virtual reality, thanks to computer and the internet, has become a daily routine for everyone. Students unable to go to school are using the internet and learning to communicate and assimilate information and education in the digital world. The home has now become the school, thanks to e-learning. The pandemic also brought out the best in us. People came forward to help each other during this difficult time. Street animals, poor laborers, homeless people, etc. were generously helped. Understanding humanity with generous heart has been the hallmark of this pandemic. The present situation also brought a lot of change in the environment. For instance, pollution levels have gone down and the ozone layer is also healing. People have learned to use their resources judiciously. I am sure you all will agree that the ban on Chinese products has made Indians conscious of the virtues of self-reliance. Our Honorable Prime Minister envisioned a strong and self-reliant nation and it seems that this pandemic has helped spread this message wide and clear. He rightfully gave the slogan, Vocal for Local. The pandemic is still raging and we, the citizens of our country, should take precautions and be firm in the belief that this too shall pass. Let us therefore make this our pathway and not consider this journey perilous. Thank you. That was interesting. I request interjector number five, Divyam Gupta, to interject speaker number five. Good morning, everyone. Dear speaker, my question to you is, as you mentioned about the various pros of COVID-19, don't you feel that the biggest problem that our country and the entire world faced was a huge decline in its GDP, counting for minus 23.9%? Kindly present your views on it. Uh, could you please repeat the question? Yeah, sure. I said that you mentioned about the various pros of COVID-19. 
that it has various advantages but have you forgotten about the biggest disadvantage that our country is suffering that a huge increase in its unemployment along with a huge decline in its gdp kindly present your views on it uh so uh, so my uh, uh, answer is uh, uh, the world has uh, uh, has been united and people are helping each other and uh, and there is uh, the feeling that about each and every one people are taking care of each other so they are helping each other and they are globally now united so humanity has been the uh, has been the hallmark in this pandemic and uh, I, and i feel that if uh, and surely our pathways will not be perilous if still the people will help each other thank you thank you speaking against the motion now we have speaker number 5 sania mohammad farooq sheikh i sania sheikh of class 10 would like to speak against the motion covid times pathways not perilous the corona virus outbreak has been devastating globally I think we can all agree to this. How can we then speak as pathways? Certainly not. With the rising casualties, worrying press conferences, small businesses shuttering for the foreseeable future, and an overstretched healthcare sector, there has not been much positive news seen to come out of the pandemic. COVID-19 has had a far-reaching impact on the labor market. Beyond the urgent concerns of the health of workers and their family members. the virus and the subsequent economic shocks have impacted the whole world across three crucial dimensions first the quantity of jobs millions of people have lost their jobs and are now struggling even to meet their basic needs like food and shelter second the quality of work this pandemic has stopped everything and our productivity now is almost zero and it will take a long time to limp back to normal third effects on specific groups who are more vulnerable than adverse labor market outcomes thus having no pathways but extended problems my dear friends in india alone there have been more than 5 million cases and beyond 80000 deaths due to this pandemic the indian economy contracted by a whopping 23.9% in the first quarter of the fiscal year 2020 and this is considering only the organized sector if we add the figures of the unorganized sector which is almost 50% of our gdp the end figure would be even more depressing man is a social animal and covid-19 has curbed all the social activities of man the fear and anxiety of a new disease and what could happen has been overwhelming and has caused strong emotions in adults and in children COVID-19 has also resulted in the closure of schools and colleges all across the world. Globally, over 1.2 billion students are out of their classrooms. Laborers lost their jobs and people migrated out in huge numbers due to this pandemic. As a result, there is a huge increase in hunger, poverty, and homelessness. Therefore, with certainty, I can say that COVID-19 is not a pathway, but surely is perilous. reduced consumer activity and collapse of tourism industry are a testament to the fact that covid-19 has been perilous to humanity covid-19 is indeed a perilous monster whose return is not known thank you that was well argued i request interjector number 5 divyam gupta to interject speaker number 5 dear speaker as you mentioned about the various disadvantages that our country faced i would like to know that what are your views on the topic that the biggest advantage we students faced because of the covid-19 was the new online class system that helped students reach the new methodology of learning and exploring their new dimensions kindly present your views on it may I my worthy opponent to repeat his question again please Yes, sure. I said that you mentioned about the various disadvantages of COVID-19, but I wanted you to ask that: Have you forgotten the biggest advantages that we students faced due to COVID-19 was the new method methodology of learning of online classes and exploring new dimensions? Kindly present your views on it. 
Good evening, Mr. Chair. I thank you, sir, for your question. Coming to your question, I would like to say that, as we all know, India is a very well populated country. India has 382 persons living per square kilometers with the highest population density. And 65% of the Indian of, of India is illiterate. As we all know, that many people are not aware of the fact of the importance of learning. And screen timing with teachers is much more disadvantageous than face-to-face -face learning. It has reduced our connectivity with the teachers. Students, I, I now see students each day laying on their beds and attending classes. Is that the way schools and classes should be attended? I, I strongly disagree on the points put forward by my opponent. On that note, I would like to conclude my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's getting quite interesting now. So I invite speaker number six, P. Alfina, to spice things up by speaking for the motion. Good morning to one and all present here. Myself, Alfina of class 12, I am here to present my views for the motion that Corona's pathways are not so perilous. Hope you are all doing well even during this pandemic situation with the current news cycle mostly focused on the coronavirus. But as the saying goes, every cloud has a silver lining. Coronavirus pandemic has also helped us to find some good news amidst a big hue and cry. Firstly, let me go back to the history. Do you know our world was affected by a worst pandemic called the Black Death in 14th century? Yes, the effect of that virus was more severe than Corona. When the world could die over such a threatening pandemic, Corona is nothing. Secondly, statistics reveals that the recovery rate from Corona is substantial. I shall validate this point with today's data. Recovery rate is 3,78,723 and the death rate is 79,275. From this, it is very evident that Corona is not so perilous. The next positive note is that there are still some countries in the world which have been very successful in combating the virus. New Zealand has reported only three positive cases till date and North Korea has reported only one. But the unbelievable thing is not this. There is no lockdown followed in those countries. Really, it is fantabulous. Post-COVID scenario doesn't look so grim as people deem it to be. According to leading economists, if India takes a leaf out of US and Singapore economies and trust indigenous business, the economy of India will recover sooner. COVID-19 has also provided us an opportunity for the setting up of the foreign industrial establishments in India. A drop in crime rate has been witnessed across all of our cities in the country. Statistics reveals that there is a sharp 42% decline in the crime rate in the capital city. COVID-19 has also helped the rejuvenation of nature and wildlife. The nature is healing itself while people restrict the moment. After two generations, the residents in Jalanda saw the snow-capped Himalayas clearly. Yes, air pollution kills 7 million people every year, but Corona has saved 7 million people. Lastly, I end my topic with some preventive measures. Wear masks, avoid speaking unnecessarily with others. Maintain social distancing. Thank you. Thank you. That was well argued. Interjector number six, Yash Janiani, is all set to ask a question. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yash Janiani, and I study in class nine. And my question for the motion is: According to a report from BBC News, countries like Yemen, Afghanistan, Venezuela are going to face famine and starvation. What are your views on that? Actually, I said poverty. Due to poverty, many members have lost their lives. But government has taken sufficient measures. Do you know, uh, many government has taken a lot, lots of crores to save their lives. And 1.97 crores have been set by the allotted for the government to save their poverty and funds. And many companies and corporate companies are giving more of the funds to save their lives. Why can't it have been saved? Thank you. Thank you. It's the turn of Harini M, speaker number six, who is going to speak against the motion. Hi. 
Greetings to all of you. I am Hani Jain Standard. Would like to speak against the motion COVID-19 pathways perilous. May wish you all a safe, securable, and a good health for the coming days. COVID-19 has turned humans' life upside down totally. A Tamil poet said that it is a gift to be born as a human, but it is a great boon to be born as human without defects. The spread of the virus was noticed in the month of 2019 itself. All the nations, including India, took precautionary measures. A complete lockdown was implemented. People were kept indoors and were thrown to greater uncertainty. The pandemic gave rise to sudden emergency, made many jobless, led to migration of daily wage labors, affected a lot of mental stress and anxiety among the people. Many people were infected and the number of deaths increased day by day, not only in India but also around the world. People began to die due to hunger. The price of the essential commodities were shorter, they become penniless and they are totally dependent on the government. The poor were left on the road. They were not even able to meet their basic necessities. Everything became online and the so-called digital India was not prepared properly to face the shock. The online education brought another big problem to the people of India where more than 40% live below the poverty line. Android phones and computers were beyond their reach. Even if they had one, the network was a big problem. Many parts of India are beyond the reach of internet connection. So students' learning and life became a question mark. People came together in their families. But mentally, they were divided. Thus gave rise to the problems and misunderstandings in the families. The economic commodities could not move from one place to another place due to curbs and they were under the attack of rats and insects. The government of India asked the people to clap and ring the bells. How stupid it was to cure the COVID-19. The dead patients were buried without any respect and without the presence of their family members. Many could not even see the faces of their beloved deceased one. It is said that the climate and environment was improved. But even today, we wear a mask to enjoy this changed climate. What a paradox. It is predicted that there will be the second wave of the pandemic, third wave of the pandemic, and we are not sure when it is going to end. I would strongly assert that the COVID-19 has thrown the world into darkness and the human life out of normal living. My only hope is that we unite as one humanity, breaking all our barriers to come out of the deadly virus and lead a peaceful, healthy life. Thank you everyone for this great opportunity to talk before you all. Thank you. Thank you. Those were well-balanced views indeed. In Dejector number 6, Yash Janiani will now question speaker number 6. Please go ahead. My, my question against the motion is, humans have adapted everything from Stone Age to Ice Age and the Modern Age as well. They overcame meteor showers, plague and swine flu as well. So doesn't that assure we can overcome COVID also? Yes, I would agree that it is even it is a pandemic disease. Even when the king Sersha as a king, he introduced a counting method and it was cured. I would believe that yes, we could come out of this pandemic, but the pathways taken for this is making the people or leading the people in the perilous with preventive measures which does not harm the people in any dangerous way. We can overcome this disease. I agree. If we can overcome, but the steps taken for the prevention should be not more perilous for the people. It should not give any harmness for the people. Thank you. Thank you. Supporting the motion, we have speaker number seven, Sneha and Shastri. I, Sneha and Shastri of Class 11 would like to speak for the motion that is COVID times, pathways not perilous. COVID times may be testing times. However, in my opinion, everything is not lost. People are in the safety of their homes and crime rates have seen a sharp decrease. Roadways are now witnessing lesser accidents. Though India is in the grip of the deadly virus, the mortality rate in India is way less than other countries. Are pathways still perilous? I don't think so. 
Human beings have been running in pursuit of never-ending success, becoming puppets in the hands of the mechanical world. COVID-19 has indirectly paved a path for us to connect with our families and enjoy the essence of being loved by our dear ones. Every individual is focusing on becoming healthier and maintaining a good immune system. If I look at my own family, we now have time for yoga and also prefer organic and homemade food over junk. Such a change in preference was only and only possible due to this pandemic. This is just a case of one household in India. And if we analyze this way, don't you think that the entire world is working towards a better future? Just shift your glance towards how this pandemic has affected nations and you will now see that countries have realized the importance of better healthcare and sanitation facilities. This pandemic has enlightened the minds of our leaders and our Prime Minister has promised to double the rate to 2.5% for healthcare by 2025. India is also promoting scientific research and development of technology. How can you ignore the fact that India is now walking on the track of digitalization? COVID-19 has taught us that even in India, the land of Gurukuls, students can obtain education through virtual classrooms. The statistics of e-learning apps such as Coursera and Unacademy have seen a three times surge indicating how people are trying to learn new things both at student and professional level. Cashless transactions are at an all-time high. Isn't this a clear proof that COVID times have been a pathway for us? Well, the world is making every effort to control the virus. Look outside. How clean the sky looks. Our mornings now begin with the chirping of birds rather than traffic noise. Pollution levels have dropped back to those that were seen in 2006. While life is rejuvenating, waters have become cleaner due to lesser automobile and human interaction. A magnificent panorama of Himalayas can now be seen from behind Shimla. This is a lesson and a guideline for all of us about how we must safeguard our environment. This pandemic has been a cleaning process. It has been a guiding map disguised as a perilous storm. It has been a pathway to a better future. In the words of Abraham Lincoln, we can complain that rose bushes have thorns. Or we can rejoice that thorn bushes have roses. And I strongly believe that COVID times are pathways and not perilous. Thank you. That was well argued. In the chapter number seven, Shagun Singh is all set to ask a question. Please go ahead. A very warm good morning to jury members and the house. Today I, Shagun Singh, interjector number seven, would like to put forward my question to contestant number seven for the motion. As you have mentioned that it has helped us to connect with our families. So do you think we need a virus to teach us how we have to connect with our families? So according to you, it has helped a lot. And because of this, it has turned out to be a pathway. But let's not ignore the fact that there were comparatively more divorce cases, more suicide rates. It has led to anxiety and depression. Domestic violence has grown. And according to these points, I think it to be a perilous. So please justify your statement in regard with these points. Oh, well, thank you, Interjector, for your question. You asked that, uh, did we need a virus to teach us all this? Yes, of course. Before, because before we were not at all paying attention to all these things. And now, because this virus has entered our lives, it has paved a pathway for us to realize that how important families are to us. And now it has also taught us what relations, uh, relationships do we have with our families. And the point of uh, divorce cases, suicide rates, or uh, domestic violence. I think crime rates have seen a sharp decrease. Before, it used to be more less. And now these have seen a sharp decrease. So I strongly believe that COVID times are a pathway for us. They have taught us many things and they have actually enhanced our relationship with our families. Thank you. Thank you. It's the turn of speaker number seven, Shreyan C. Rai, who is going to speak against the motion. I, Shreyan C. Rai of class 11, am here to speak against the motion. COVID times, pathways not perilous. While the world was busy heralding the new year with hopes in their hearts and dreams in the eyes, welcoming 2020, a deadly virus slowly crept into our lives. As the coronavirus outbreak gripped the nations, Pandora of bitter truth came to the surface. How perilous our life is, how unprepared we are. I see chaos, blunder, danger everywhere. While the medical world is doing a commendable job, we can still see cases of enhanced stay, abuse of antibiotics, 
bundling of procedures and of course the inflation of bills which is no less perilous imagine the pain of those who lost their loved ones during the pandemic unable to meet them or bid them a proper farewell to prevent the spread we were sent into lockdown few of us were lucky enough to take a break in the comfort of our homes with all the essentials but how about the daily wage laborers and the migrants a large number of whom have been stranded in their cities of work with little means of survival and no way to go back home they are amongst the worst affected even before the virus can kill them they die of hunger despite india crossing 4 million cases in the first week of september i'm sure not much would care about this and still roam the streets like it was the exact same september morning as our former years for the majority out there their jobs are the only pillar of support for them and their families according to a joint report by the international labor organization and the asian development bank an astounding 41 lakh youths lost their jobs in india alone unsurprisingly the unemployment rate has risen from 5.36% to 8.3% we are gloating over the digitization of education online learning etc but this digital initiative is perpetuating the dominance of elite schools over the education which is leading to a divide between rich and poor and urban and rural should we not get affected by this if we are fortunate enough not to face these problems doesn't mean everything is bright and lovely this lethal disease is going to be around for much longer than expected without sterner measures mankind would continue walking on the same path in which we are now a death dealing path therefore i would like to conclude by strongly opposing the statement covid times pathways not perilous thank you that was well said thank you interjector number 7 shagun singh is all set to ask a question please go ahead honorable jury members for you i would like to put the another question in the house to contestant number 7 against the motion as you have mentioned about daily wage earners and about 41 lakh people losing their jobs but do but do you know due to this pandemic there were so many virtual businesses that came up that created a lot of employment do you know what is the earning of the youtubers in our country or all over the world according to these points i think it to be a pathway for sure please justify your point thank you interjector that was an amazing question but let me tell you this youtubers and online learner um, online the people who get income from online aren't the only ones who have to earn money there are people who don't have access to the internet there are so many local shops so shops around they don't run on the internet they require human to human interaction what do you tell about that their their, in, their income is declining what do you tell about that even they have to live right is not just youtubers youtubers earn lakhs of money these people run on thousands and even if they get one sale a day it's really important for them thank you thank you moving on with the competition i now call upon speaker number 8 nashra fatima to express her views for the motion we must speak our minds openly debate our agreements honestly but always pursue solidarity I Nashra Fatima of class 10 would like to speak for the motion covid times pathways not perils I strongly believe that this pandemic is showing us the pathways to a better future to exist a future in which we can work together to build a different society mindfulness can supplant our fear driven pessimistic perspective on the future by focusing bare awareness on the present moment the mindfulness muscle can be strengthened by exercises such as occasionally setting a timer on the phone and practicing mindful observations of emotions as they come and go and as the reminder of the transience of all things including the pandemic we delineate multiple coping strategies example behavioral activation acceptance based coping mindfulness practice loving kindness practices etc These strategies may be especially effective because they help individuals make meaning, build the stress tolerance, 
increase social support, foster a view of a deep human interconnectedness and take goal directed. Scientists who study resilience and coping have provided grounds for optimism that many people will struggle through this challenging time, yet emerge even stronger than before. Although the need for social distance stands the current pandemic apart from other disasters, the rupture in social bonds can be partly compensated. This can be accomplished by reaching out to others via modern technology and social media and supporting others via expressing empathy, active listening and sharing resources. In these ways and others, it is possible to find meaning with cope effectively with fear. People started focusing on living their best possible life. For example, carry on with a variety of activities including hobbies and mentally challenging tasks such as solving puzzles, learning an instrument, listening to music, singing, playing internet games, learning a language and preparing for how life will change for the better following the pandemic. As people got ample time by staying at home, they have strengthened the family relations and bonds. Finally, I conclude that, as with optimizing a stroke pathway during normal times, there is no silver bullet solution. It is up to us to figure this out ourselves and the best way to do is by learning from each other. Thank you. Thank you for those wonderful insights. Interjector number 8, Dibashri Kuar is keen to ask a question. Please go ahead. Good morning to the house and the speakers. I am Dibashri Kuar, Interjector number 8. So according to the National Sexual Assault Hotline, there is 21% increase in the people younger than 18 contacting the hotline to report their abuses. In fact, 34% of the child abusers are family members. So. Speaker number eight has mentioned about family relations, but statistically speaking, home isn't the safest place anymore. So my dear speaker, why do you think COVID time is the pathway when children like you and me are suffering at their homes? Thank you for your qu question. Yes, I have said that we have strengthened the family relations and bonds. And as you said that there are many abuses going on, but still there are more number of family relations and bonds they have strengthened it there are more number of cases in which they people who are going to take divorce are even have strengthened their relations and came back so while saying about this we can say that more than those abuses it is just all are being together and this covid has shown us that we can feel each other and we can strengthen the relations other than being in that abuses and all the police officers and the crimes are taking their responsibilities and looking into the matter. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not the least is the turn of speaker number eight, V. Nainita, who is going to speak against the motion. A very fine good morning to all the jury. I, Nainita of class 9, would like to speak against the motion for the given topic, COVID times pathways not perilous. The outbreak of the novel coronavirus has necessitated worldwide social distancing measures with billions of people at home all day. There has been a huge need to keep them occupied, entertained and hopeful. Isolation can have an aggressive effect on our mental health and there is a need to look out for our collective well-being. People were compelled to change their lifestyle. The exodus triggered by the lockdown also carries the risk that the virus will rapidly spread in all parts of India, including those where the healthcare facilities are the weakest. Rather than attempting to prevent the migration, the government should ensure food security and cash transfers to ensure that the workers are not forced to undertake long and unsafe journeys which has already led to a number of deaths. Many of the students are unable to perceive the depth of the situation of the drastic measures taken by different states and boards. The fears surrounding the exams are rising. 
government imposed online classes for the students but they are unable to adapt unfamiliar technologies there are a lot of distractions technical issues and lack of in person interactions even young children are getting affected by radiation and eyesight problems due to constant use of mobiles for online classes in such uncertain times it is common for people to experience anxiety and stress including teachers many of the teachers have lost their jobs while some teachers are not paid enough i'm saddened by the fact that teachers are selling vegetables to make both ends meet when it comes to parents the lower rungs of the society are facing a heart wrenching situation many of them have lost their jobs while others struggle to get back home safely what is common is that they have all lost their livelihoods due to the lockdown their main concern is to feed their families and hence the education of their children has taken a back seat all this has led to a negative impact on the social beings which enforced them to commit suicide so i strongly say that covid times pathways are extremely perilous that was well said thank you i request interjector number 8 debashri kumar to ask a question to v nainata the speaker number 8 has mentioned about millions of people dying due to the covid 19 but my question is with constant resources for the covid-19 vaccine and a thorough study to understand the nature of the corona virus the human knowledge is infinitely growing on preventive healthcare and infectious microbes so when the next pandemic strikes humanity won't be unprepared so my dear speaker why do you think covid time is perilous when it is in fact a pathway and it can save the humanity from extinction in future thank you We seem to have lost connection with speaker number 8 V Nainata. We will get back to her in some time. We will proceed with the competition. It seems that uh V Nainata has rejoined. We you may proceed with your answer. Thank you. Speaker number eight, V. Nainita, may proceed with her answer. It seems we have lost connection again. We will proceed with the competition. I request interjector number eight to repeat her question, please. The speaker number eight has mentioned about millions of deaths due to the COVID nineteen virus. But my question is, with constant resources for the COVID nineteen vaccine and a thorough study to understand the nature of the corona virus, the human knowledge is infinitely growing on preventive healthcare and infectious microbes. So when the next pandemic strikes, humanity won't be unprepared. So in a way it can be humanity's saving grace. So my the speaker, why do you think covid time is perilous when it in fact can save the humanity in future from extinction? I request speaker number 8 V Nainata to proceed with her answer. It seems we have lost connection again. We may proceed with the competition now. We have come to the end of the speeches. We appreciate all the speakers for their untiring efforts to present their views. We have now come to this end of the fascinating exchange of ideas. Our generation does have some very valuable insights on our challenges, pathways and opportunities galore. I now request our judges to address the gathering. I request Dr. Namita Rajput to express her views.
yes my salutations to everyone uh, the uh, the debate and uh, the kind of program it is uh, it is like uh, above uh, everything which i have seen and the students who have participated uh, they have really uh, did a lot of research and uh, the the strong conviction and the arguments which they are giving uh, for and against the motion uh, has really uh, you know it is really really thought provoking so my uh, salutations to the organization uh, who are uh, who have organized this uh, premium event that is your uh, peter mohir uh, inter province debate and uh, thanks for calling me as a judge for this event and i'm really feeling very enlightened in terms of how our students have come up uh, in terms of their knowledge in terms of their research activities in terms of their communication skills so uh, my best of luck to uh, all the students may you rise and shine and uh, increase your standards even more because of in this pandemic situation has taught us such good lessons that education can be online and uh, without uh, you know uh, having any compromise on the quality um, as far as the uh, education uh, teaching learning process is concerned so uh, you know being a teacher uh, for so many years teaching in delhi universities this is the first time that we have moved on to the uh, complete educational platform which is uh, digitally uh, driven so uh, you know we should take it as an opportunity and uh, not as a challenge but uh, all these opportunities uh, you know can uh, really help us in growing our uh, you know hidden skills like earlier we never uh, you know thought of uh, that we will be logging on through zoom and all these programs can really happen so this pandemic has given us lessons that everything is a reality and we can you know move on with any kind of a situation and students of today that is the millennium generation uh, is much uh, faster and intelligent and uh, my congratulations to all the participants and uh, may you rise and shine thank you so much for calling me in this event i'm really enlightened and very happy and giving my best wishes to everyone thank you so much thank you ma'am for those encouraging words i request mr subodh chopra to express his views hi everyone uh, i'll tell you something immediately that since i'm also a senior to all of you and it fills me with immense pride i am extremely elated and i am like extremely like unbelievably proud at the moment because to see all of you such intelligent people such smart intelligent uh perspicuous ideas okay and i have really liked listening to each and every one of you i liked uh you know like some of you were so very to the point uh one little thing because i am a writer too so there is something i would like to bring to your notice that uh you see you one has to look at this this uh topic uh, because we are all right now in the middle of it we are in the thick of things there is a pandemic going on uh, we are still confined to our houses we are not able to move the life like we knew it is completely changed okay wearing a mask has become mandatory so you see now we are in a situation so when you put yourself in a situation like this you see like somebody in the family is ailing so tabiyat kharab hai and now you want uh, to see this small little thing from your perspective so always whenever you are in a debate or an or a counter argument on a topic like this put yourself in a situation and imbibe and absorb and then react to it okay giving it in an example as an example is say somebody in your family is not keeping well the immediate thing that would come to your mind is now how are we going to sustain you know because that person probably is the sole earning member of the house so when you come up with with points like what is going to happen to our finances our economy is crash, crashing down and our family is not like we were see these are givens these are these are points which immediately come to your mind what i really appreciated which because i was worried till the first few speakers that none of you are actually coming up with a perspective that i would really you know think about or probably get an x factor into the entire situation which i did not knew or which i did not know sorry or which i was not able to uh, get my mind to that point so 
a uh, lot of you, especially the people who were against the motion, spoke about the fact that uh, what is happening to our economy. The, 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 more, the most important thing, it seemed that all of you were concerned about what is going to happen to your future. But what I also expected at the same time was that when you are, uh, see, because this is a topic which is which is a lot to do with our, our perception of uh, moralities. Okay, why I am saying this is because you can look at it in a very pessimistic way, you can look at it in a very optimistic way, and then you can also look at it in a very practical way. Okay, practical is what I was also looking for, you know, uh, while you were giving up uh, your, your uh, uh, opinions on the topic. Okay, so this is the first thing that I thought that you all must know, that next time when you are in an argument or when you are having a discussion about this topic, when you are discussing Corona and its after effects on us, don't just stick to you know the the economy or the world or the country or what the prime minister has done or how people are walking on the street or how a woman uh, was forced to you know uh, conceive a child on the road and continue to move on see these are stray incidents but what what you need to look at it is on a very very uh, very subjective manner is what i was expecting so this is my first uh, feedback on this entire thing I am extremely happy, like I said, I am very proud of you guys, very sharp thinking people, uh, the rebuttals were good, uh, your, 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 the way you all allocated yourself, your interjections, uh, your, your articulation was fantastic, top notch, my congratulations to the teachers, the team who has really worked hard in shortlisting these students and uh, uh, so much, <laughs> thank you so much, thank you so much for having me here as a judge, I really enjoyed this. Thank you, sir, for those wonderful words. I now request Dr. Shailaja Ramesh to speak a few words. Yeah, so, uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of today's activities. And just like the other judges said, uh, let me also tell you how much of a pleasure it was to listen to all of you, all the students debate and to what you display the courage of your convictions with such vigor. Um, we've all been thrown into these very strange pandemic times, as we all saw today. Uh, but I'd also like to commend the school specifically for not canceling such events, you know, as trivial, but taking it online, giving students the chance to participate in this slice of relative normalcy where uh, your cultural and co-curricular activities and events are part of your regular school year. Uh, I can only imagine the kind of work that also went behind organizing an event of this magnitude. You know, a pan-India competition, taking into consideration all kinds of challenges that might come up is truly commendable and extremely nerve-wracking. Um, I myself had a power cut uh, at about 8.29 this morning. So I was convinced I was going to miss the event and my 4G is bad. And I've gone paperless during the lockdown. So uh, juggling a multitude of electronics without the comfort of electricity, such a nightmare. I was ready to go with uh, all of you who were uh, who uh, spoke against the motion. So you know, imagine now having to plan for this kind of you know this kind of similar crisis for every person who attended this event. That's terrible. So big kudos to the organizing team at uh, St. Francis de Sales School for making this such a seamlessly conducted event. Now moving on to the debate. There are two very interesting quotes that I always think of when uh, I, you know, we think about a debate. When it comes to me, I think of these two things. So time spent arguing is, oddly enough, almost never wasted. And second quote is, it's better to debate a question without settling it than to settle a question without debating it. Uh, you'll have to look up who spoke all of these, so that's a little bit of homework for you. Now, um, why do you think I use these quotes? The essence of both these quotes is that debating or arguing is the cornerstone of every society. Where there's a debate or an open discussion of things, there's freedom, a democracy which we need to guard very carefully. Debates like these, starting from the school level, build and nurture our young minds, such as yours, who will, through reasoning and open discussion, you lead us to a much better, brighter world. So you did a wonderful thing here today. Keep the discussion going. Don't stop questioning. Look for answers. And if you don't find an answer that's satisfactory enough, 
keep asking more questions. So let me take a moment to quickly congratulate each and every participant today. Each and every one of you did a fabulous job of presenting and in the interjection rounds. So while there will be winners, please don't take this to mean that the rest are losers. Participating is its own merit, and you've taken a major step in the field of language. That's rhetoric and persuasion. Remember, you're in the same league as people like Aristotle and Cicero. So keep at it, and all the best to all of you. And I should also say this is a big part of something that I love doing, so much so that I made a career of it. So, well, I'm not a professional debater, but I work in a place, a uh, step from the Hindu group, where we help people equipped from a variety of backgrounds with the language and communication skills that you'll need to debate, to discuss, to argue, to present successfully. So this was an extra special event for me. Thank you so much to St. Francis of Sun School for giving me the opportunity to spend this wonderful Saturday morning with all of you. And uh, to Ms. Savita Mahan and Ma'am especially, thank you so much, Ma'am, for patiently guiding me through all the processes to be followed today. Have a wonderful weekend, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am, for those words of wisdom. And now, it's time for the much-awaited results. I request our senior coordinator, Monica Kapoor, ma'am, to declare the results. Reverend fathers, sisters, brothers, esteemed judges, father counselors, teachers in charge, and participants from various MSFS schools across the country, dear parents and students, a very good morning to all. This is an iconic moment as we have just witnessed the successful culmination of the first ever All India Father Peter Murmia Inter-Province Debate Competition 2020. It is rightly said, if I have given my all and still I do not win, I haven't lost for I remember the journey. The journey of a concept becoming a reality with the huge investment of meticulous planning and coordination from selections to the finals, the preparation, the time, the energy and enthusiasm invested has today borne results. At the onset, heartiest congratulations to all the participants. And now I'm sure your heart is pounding. You missed a heartbeat. So amidst all the excitement, let's applaud the winner of the second best interjector prize who receives an e-certificate and a cash prize of rupees 1000. And the proud recipient of this prize is Vrittanth Chopra from SFS Public School, ICSC and ISC Bengaluru of South West Province. And now the winner of the best interjector prize is Shagun Singh of St. Francis D. Sales Higher Secondary School, Narengi of Guwahati Province. Shagun receives an e-certificate and a cash prize of rupees 1,500. And moving on to the next set of prizes. For the motion, the runner-up prize consisting of an e-certificate and a cash prize of rupees 2,000 goes to Nashra Fatima from St. Francis D. Sales School, Gajuwaka of Vishakhapatnam province. And the proud winner of the runner-up prize against the motion goes to Sanya Mohammad Farooq Sheikh from St. Francis D. Sales High School, Shanwari Pune of Pune province. She receives an e-certificate and a cash prize of rupees 2000. And finally, here are the prizes for the best speakers. 
the best speaker prize for the motion is backed by the winner who receives an e certificate and a cash prize of rupees 3000 and the proud recipient is sneha n shastri from sfs public school icsc and isc bengaluru of southwest province and now for the best speaker prize against the motion and the prize goes to shreyan c rai once again of sfs public school icsc and isc bengaluru of southwest province shreyan is the proud recipient of an e certificate and a cash prize of rupees 3000 on behalf of the school management staff and students congratulations to all the prize winners who have attained their goal of meeting success with their consistency and perseverance we hope that all the msfs schools will always extend their wholehearted support and cooperation for organizing many more editions of such grand events thank you all once again thank you ma'am i now request the head boy anhad nehrotra to propose the vote of thanks gratitude is not just a sentiment it is the reverence of the heart on behalf of the francelian family it is our proud privilege to propose the vote of thanks first and foremost we would like to thank our distinguished panel of judges dr namita rajput mr subodh chopra and dr shailaja ramesh for sparing their valuable time to judge the debaters and their kind words of encouragement we express our gratitude to all the fathers brothers and sisters for being the pillars of strength to all the students coordinating with us and honoring us with their gracious presence our sincerest appreciation and gratitude to all the father counselors teachers and students from our francelian fraternity for their unfailing support to this extraordinary endeavor we are grateful to the team that brought this debate on a large canvas and work behind the scenes to invigorate our young achievers from across india and make it a success i thank you all once again have a good day ahead thank you anhad i now request everybody to rise for the national anthem The power of real debate is in the language and intellectual honesty of the debaters. It is better to debate a question without settling it than to settle a question without debating it. That is what we achieved today. Thank you for being a part of this historic venture. Have a great day. <laughs>